up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Downtime and Downfall, episode 233, and today we are here with Josh from Breaker Stereo in Oxnard, California. That's right. <laughs> ah, Josh, what's up, bro? How are you? I'm good, man. How are you? Hey, thanks for coming, man. Of course. Thanks for having me. Dude, it's always good to see you, bro. Yeah, you, uh, sure. You don't age, dude. No, what's going on with that? <laughs> Got that Filipino blood. So. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that what it is, dude? Sweet, it's that brown blood, man. <laughs> oh, my God. You look the same as the day I met you, bro. Uh, so do you, though. <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you right. dude and we've known each other for a long time do you remember the first time that we that we met like our first interaction i i know it was at the shop uh-huh and you were working there it was at the first time we met or did, you, did we meet before that i think it was when i first started working there yeah. um i was about 18 so you're probably talking maybe 2003 or something like that yeah um i remember you had that white blazer uh, yeah, uh, uh i had a white denali Denali, X, no, not an XL, just a regular Denali. I had a blazer, but it, it was a black blazer. Maybe that one, but it, you you sold me a JL Audio 501 amp. It was a, okay, That's it what was I a blazer remember. and it was black. Cause okay, I had, got you. I got had you, two got of those you. in there. That's what I remember, dude. <laughs> but dude, that was so long ago, man. Yeah, almost 20 years, huh? So at that, at that time, what was your position at Breakers? I was a this a salesman slash sales manager at that particular time. Okay. Mm -hmm. So at what time did or when did you start working for the company? Oh wow, um, I was a junior in high school, believe it or not. So, nineteen ninety two. Oh my gosh, <laughs> dude! Yeah, man. So it's in your blood, bro. Yeah, yeah. That's... I've been there for uh, well, I don't know how many years that is now. Did the calculations, but yeah. I started when I was fifteen. Oh my gosh! I've literally only had two jobs in my lifetime. I worked for Murray Murray Calendars for uh -huh. like two weeks before they fired. Let me, me. Let me scoot that a little closer. Oh, okay, cool. Here. So I worked for Murray Calendars for two weeks before they fired me. You were eating the pies or what? How'd you know? <laughs> Fifteen year old kid, dude. <laughs> pies everywhere. <laughs> Let me tell you, man. Uh, yeah, I was eating too much of the stuff that was there, so I decided it wasn't a good idea. Oh my god! I was eating into their profits, literally. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, and so I had a friend um, by the name of Tyrone, and he worked um, at Breaker Stereo, and I had known about Breakers for you know since I was ten years old, and mm -hmm. I was really in the car audio even back then because my cousin who lived in Oakland had a car stereo system in his car, and mm -hmm. when I first heard his car, I was hooked. Mm. I was like, you can listen to music this way? Because yeah. <laughs> I was used to listening to music in my mom's 1975 Ford station wagon. Oh, like wow. One center speaker. That's, that's what I was going to say. Those those weird style ones where it's yeah. like 13 by 2. And it's yeah. like, what? Yeah. why did they design this yeah. like this? I have no idea. <laughs> and so he had a pair of 6 by 9s that he cut into... In the rear deck of his, like, whatever year it was, my 80s Corolla. Okay. And he had a uh, a Beckert radio, which is, there weren't really a lot of aftermarket radios at that point, um, now that I, you know, am in the business. Mm -hmm. It was a radio that was out of a Mercedes Benz. That's all I remember is my, my cousin said, this is, a, look at this radio. I just got it. It came out of a Mercedes and I hooked up these two pioneer six by nines to it and it sounded incredible hmm. and i was like this is the most amazing thing i've ever heard in my life and from that point i was totally hooked i had a, a cousin that was dating a guy that worked at breaker stereo and these were this was back in the day when you had the mini trucks you remember mm -hmm. the mini trucks yeah, yeah, yeah. and the hydraulics and all that crazy stuff well he had in the bed of his uh mazda pickup four 15 inch woofers mm. and i heard that and i was like oh my god this is great yeah <laughs> and so and he worked there and i known about them for a long time and i actually thought about working there for the longest and my friend tyrone ended up working there and uh it's a funny story and we love to tell it uh so me and tyrone we're the best of friends uh, growing up and he worked there, and he had to go to a uh, summer league uh, basketball tournament. Okay. Um, that where he was not going to be able to work there for like a month and a half. So <clears throat> they told him, "Hey, you got to get someone to fill your position." 
it was just a part-time position, 15 hours a week or whatever, maybe. And so he came to me, he's like, hey, you want a job for, uh, you know, a little, <laughs> a little bit? And I was like, heck yeah. So I started working there. And then literally the day that Tyron was coming back to work, <clears throat> I told my boss, hey, so Tyron's coming back. And I guess I'll, you know, see you. And if you ever need me for anything, I guess give me a call. You have my number. And she goes, oh, well, Tyron's not coming back. And I said, what, why? And she goes, well, I decided that you're a better fit. And I said, no, but he's my best friend. <laughs> I took his job. Are you kidding me? So she put me in a, in a tight position. And uh, I said, well, I can't do that. Yeah. I just can't do that because he's, you know, it's not okay. Yeah, for sure. And he goes, she goes, okay, well, it's up to you, but I'm not hiring Tyrone back. So I'm going to look for somebody else. Mm. So it doesn't matter if you take the job or not. I'm going to get somebody else. And I said, well, if that's the case, <laughs> then I guess I'll be here tomorrow. Oh, wow. And I had to break it to him. I had you to, had to? I had oh to break my gosh. it to him. Yeah, so I went to him. Um, I, I don't think I had to, but yeah. I felt obligated to. For sure. Obviously, right. So I said, hey, man, Diane said that you're not going to come back to Berkeley. And he's like, what? And I was like, yeah. And I told him the story. And he said... All right, not a big deal. So Tyron was a real, you know, easygoing guy. Mm -hmm. And he ended up working with us again like two or three times after that. So basically that was my uh, start at Breaker Stereo. <laughs> dude, that's a very mature combo to be having at 15. Dude. Yeah, right, for sure. Yeah, yeah, I thought he handled it well. I thought it would go worse. I thought that possibly it may be the end of our friendship. <laughs> oh my, it could have very well been. I, have, I've sure. lost so many friendships for smaller things. Than, I've probably lost friendships for fries before, dude. <laughs> For fries? For fries, dude. <laughs> not electronics, actual so fries. fries. <laughs> like you ate my fries, bro. So I'm not your get out of the car. I'm never talking to you again, dude. I was very disposable with friends in the back in the <laughs> day, which is uh apparently. <laughs> <laughs> but uh dude, so at 10 years old, you hear the system, yeah, and you get hooked. Yeah. What was your relationship like with music at that time? Well, okay, so, I mean, at, at that time, I think we're all very impressionable, right? We like what's, what's the latest, you know, I remember um, hip-hop was definitely, you know, on my radar and mm -hmm. what I listened to. So, I, at that time, at that particular time, I remember a lot of Run DMC, I, I remember a lot of Beastie Boys, I remember uh, NWA, so those are the groups I, that I would listen to. Got you. So... Did you realize that you had a passion for music at an early age? I don't, th you know what? It's, it's funny because you get, you, you, as a, as, at that age, you kind of find what you like and you just kind of naturally gravitate toward, yeah. towards it. And so, you know, you don't think about those things, right? But you look back on it and you go, yeah, this was, for me, this was my turning point. Yeah, for sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you, now being in the industry, do mm -hmm. you find that your customers, have a passion for music they 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 go hand in hand or what do you feel like the the real motivation is for people when they want to get you know a, a stereo system i think yeah i think that that's it for sure you know because there's not a lot of environments where you can really enjoy music um beyond let's say let's say you got a good set of beats headphones right that mm -hmm. you, you listen to when you go to the gym yeah right <clears throat> so those are only really like two scenarios that you can really listen to music good like in the gym on your headphones but then still you're limited about, you know, you're limited on how much bass it's able to produce and how loud it gets and, and things of that nature. And then in your car, and everyone's in their car and they're commuting, whether they're going to the store, picking up their kids, whatever it may be, that's an environment in which you can enhance that music experience, right? So yeah, of course, there's a, there's a correlation between the, you know, a person that's passionate about music and a person, a person that, you know, is passionate about stereos. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So born and raised, where were... Uh... Where are you from? So I'm a Navy brat. My um, my dad was in the Navy for 20 years. I was born in uh, Great Lakes, Illinois. Oh, okay. Yeah, which is just right uh, outside of Chicago. Um, we moved around a lot when I was uh, very young. Moved to Iceland for a couple years. Iceland? Yeah, I don't remember that. Oh my <laughs> God, that is crazy. Right? My mom said it was beautiful according to the picture. I mean, the pictures that you know I'm in that she has in the family album. It's beautiful. I don't remember a thing. I was three years old when we left. Okay, gotcha. Then we moved to San Diego for um, 
a couple of years, and then we ended up moving here. My dad got stationed here at the uh, Navy base here in Port Wainimi. And then he just ended up retiring, and we stayed here. Did you, you ever think about moving out of Oxnard? Yeah. <laughs> you know, growing up, <clears throat> I think every everyone that grows up in this area yeah. goes, because of housing and ex, you know, how expensive things are, goes, where else can I move? that's out of this area where houses don't cost so much, right? I mean, now they're like, not like bordering a million dollars for a right, house yeah. in Ventura. It's like nuts. So everybody just moves to Bakersfield. Yeah. <laughs> they do, right? <laughs> or Vegas. Or Oxnard number two. That's right. Bakersfield and yeah, Oxnard it, number two. It pretty, it yeah, pretty or Vegas, is. you're right. Right, yeah. The vacation spot of everybody. Exactly. <laughs> but even it's getting expensive there now, too. Yeah. Yeah, I thought about moving to um, Arizona, of mm. all places. My buddy, um, when we were in our early 20s, he moved to Phoenix uh, then, and it, he had no connections there. And he's like, I'm going to Phoenix because it's, I've been there. It's beautiful. Mm. You know, there's a lot of new things that are popping up. There's a lot of cool things for young people to do. So I'm going. Yeah. And I was like, okay, he left. I went to go visit him, and I was impressed too. And I was like, "Yeah, let's let's do this," um, because the housing there was just so cheap. I mean, I kind of remember the housing being—I mean, this was twenty years ago, yeah. twenty-five years ago—housing being at about a hundred, under a hundred thousand dollars. He bought a house for like eighty-nine thousand dollars. Oh my god! Four bedroom, fully like a brand new house. Mortgage is stupid ridiculous, like six hundred dollars a month. Yeah. Right, more than you pay rent at that time, and I was like, that makes sense. But then I ended up buying a house here and had a pretty good deal. I just ended up staying, and you know, we're kind of creatures of habit. So <laughs> I got comfortable, um, and I just continued to work at Breakers. And my my career was definitely progressing at that point, mm-hmm. so I didn't feel a, a, a need to really leave because I had all my needs met, and you know, I bought a house at a pretty young age, and. Uh, Figured, hey, let's just stay here. You guys are doing it, man. Breakers is a staple in the community. It has. You know, it started in 1976, man. Wow. Who's the the creator of the business? So uh, Bob Graham, a gentleman by the name of Bob Graham, who since retired about 12 years ago or so. But he's. uh, I still meet with him. Actually, I had lunch with him uh, about a month ago. Um, You know, he's in his, uh, I want to say he's early 70s now but he's in great shape and he's got a, you know he's got a sharp mind and I pick his brain all the time and he's he's really willing to sit down with me at times and I've got questions for him and he's been a really good uh, mentor for me over mm. the, the last you know couple couple years so when you uh, when you stole uh, your buddy's job uh... <laughs> What were yeah. man? You, you have did to, it. You have to put it that way. Yeah, that's, that's exactly <laughs> what it. it is. I just speak facts. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> so when your poor buddy went on vacation and you just poached his job, <laughs> what 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 were some of the some of the tasks that you had starting off? <laughs> um, very remedial stuff, man. Taking the trash out, you know, um, dusting off the stereos. Yeah. Um, I I did the. I did the shipping, so if, you know, I had a defective product, I would call in for return authorization and send it out. <clears throat> so very, very, you know, remedial stuff. And then uh, what happened is I gra- graduated high school, and I uh, was going to college, and you know what? I'm just doing my job, and my, my boss, Diane, she goes, hey, why don't you go out there and sell something? Mm. And I was like, okay. I love the product, you know? I was into it. I had a system in my car at that point. Um, and, you know, my first week out, I did, like, Ten thousand dollars in sales, which is like huge. I mean, the store would do thirty thousand. I did a third of the sale. Oh my god! Yeah, and she's like, "You need to work here full time." <laughs> <laughs> so I said, "Okay, that's cool." Um, I, you know, I think at that point, I had some a few classes here and there, a few credits, just enough to get by, so my mom wouldn't kick me out. Right? Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, "You can stay here, but you got to be in school." Yeah. So just enough to kind of get by, and I started working there, and I was making a decent amount of money, and I was able to move out when I was like. 20 and so um yeah and then i just turned it into my full-time gig did you always find that you had sales skills or did you develop them there at breakers you know what um it's funny you say that i think i think at that at the time when you first start to sell at a you know 20 year old he has no idea he has no concept of like the sales structure Mm -hmm. and you know the demonstration and the clothes and things of that nature 
Um, and even at that time, wow, it was such a long time ago, th those things weren't really like, you know, materialized. Meaning like you couldn't buy something and say, to, you couldn't buy a, a, there wasn't a book on sales. Got right? you. And now there's like so much material out there on how to be a better salesperson and, and things of that nature. So basically she just kind of, you know, she threw me in and because of, I believe, because of the passion that I had for car stereo, that shows through, mm -hmm. you know, if I'm talking to you about doing something for your car and I'm excited about it because I love it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're going to get excited about it too. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's just easier for you to go make the decision and go, yeah, let's do it. Let's spend a couple thousand bucks on the car stereo. Yeah, for mm -hmm. sure. Um, I think, yeah, I, I can, I can agree with that as well. As mm -hmm. far as, you know, w with sales, like if you're passionate about something, it's mm -hmm. kind of like the cheat code. You know, right <laughs> especially if it's it something is. if you're into it and maybe if you have hey, i have the same stereo right and my it's so easy right to sell it right you know? it is uh but when i worked at breakers i didn't sell anything yeah you installed right? install. i didn't install nothing dude i probably installed maybe like a couple rcas or something like that <laughs> but it was that was my that was my first job. Was it really? Actually, no. It, it was my second job. Mm -hmm. um, before that, I worked as a janitor at the El Rio School District. Did you really? So like while I was in, in school, I, I would work uh, during the week as a janitor. So I would get off school. I would go there and for like three, three hours I would work and I would have to clean like these six classrooms. Oh. And that was my job. Oh, wow. So that was my money I would make to, yeah. uh, you know, buy a skateboard or something like that. <laughs> buy a new skateboard. and I uh, thought you were an installer, so remind me what your duties were then. Uh, well, I was supposed to be. You know, they, they hired me to, to be an installer, but mm -hmm. I really didn't have any knowledge. Oh, um, okay. Like, I got hooked on car audio when I got my, uh, I had a Camaro. Mm -hmm. And my dad put a stereo in for me, and he kind of showed me how to, to do it. it. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, of course, I was like, well, I got the stereo. I want to get new speakers. Right. So he showed me how to do that. Right. And then when I got my next car, my Chevelle, uh, he's like, all right, well, I showed you, so you got to do it. So I did it. <laughs> so then I go to breakers. I'm like, hey, I know how to I install. I, right. I did this. I was right. like, um, I forget the guy's name. Steve? Steve? Or yeah. Jim? No, 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 no. Uh, Steve. Jonathan's dad. Steve. Okay, Steve. So yeah. he he was the uh, install manager. Right? Yeah, he was the mm -hmm. manager at the time, and uh, I mean, that was actually my first public job, mm -hmm. and I didn't really know what to do. I was just like trying to stay busy, trying right. to clean up here <laughs> and there. But uh, yeah, it only lasted for about a month. But in that month, it kind of it was planted only, it that was seed. only a month. Yeah, dude. Oh, wow. For some yeah. reason, it, like it was longer than that. Yeah, it was. It was only about a month, and then I, I went and I actually worked around the block from here. It's called GW Surfaces. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. I always talk. Do you know the the business? Yep. Mm -hmm. So uh, anybody they that's do countertops from and the, stuff, right? yeah, from mm -hmm. the area, they do countertops. Mm -hmm. So do like granite mm -hmm. and Corian and things right. like that. Mm -hmm. So dude, this was straight up a Flintstones job, dog. You get there first thing in the morning, you get your little coffee, <laughs> and then you go to work. And Punch at in. the time, yeah, I, I had like a, a mini disc player, dude, that had maybe a, a hundred songs on it. And oh, I would wow. just go through those. And I'm just standing. And then I would just listen to like the radio or something. I yeah. listen to like Dilemma of the Day or something like that. And then, and, and then <laughs> and the, the, the toucan, dude. Are, no way. 9 a.m. Let's go to 15 minute break, dude. So this was my. They first, would blow the whistle, bro. It was like my first job that was structured, and I always say like the Flintstone because it was just like this is like the most barbaric <laughs> kind of way of working. working. And I was like, no, dude, I am not doing this. Right. So right. then I, I I worked at uh, it's called Gaps in the in the Navy base. Okay. Um, and that's where all the uh. The Hondas would come into, oh, so the cars would come the, stock, right. and then they would come with a paperwork that says this one needs wood grain, right. this one needs a stereo. Yeah, okay. So they so come the, in from the uh, off the from boat. the from the boat. Yeah, right. yeah. Mm -hmm. So then I was installing stereos on there. I'm like, oh, this is kind of cool. Yeah. And it wasn't until I moved to uh, Nevada in mm -hmm. 2004. I moved to Carson City, Nevada. Oh, okay. And I worked at Best Buy there. Right. And that's kind of where I started my my car audio yeah. career. Yeah. And, and then, then you moved over moved here. back, and then I worked at the Best Buy right here, here from. Yeah. 2007 to 2012 yeah and, uh, i yeah, think that's probably problem. where where our paths crossed a lot more, more because you, we would do a lot of business together, together at that right time. exactly yeah you were it, always, it seemed like you were in there a lot yeah, yeah, with, yeah. Your, with your blue best buy shirt <laughs> yeah just <laughs> trying to sneak away i'd be like hey uh, i gotta go get a kit yeah. i'll be back in an hour <laughs>
<laughs> literally like two minutes away. Yeah, but that that was one thing that that like I was always just so pigeonholed at Best Buy. That yeah, these are the brands that we carry, mm-hmm. which is kind of on the lower like level. Nothing yeah. really that good. It'll, right. it'll it'll get the job, job done. done. Yeah, but I always admired what you guys had, especially yeah. when I first started working there, mm-hmm. like the the JL stuff. Yeah, dude. To this day, that's still my jam, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Jail stuff is it's it's good. We decided not to carry that brand because mm. it has gotten extremely expensive. And really, we had a price increase last year uh, between twenty five and fifty percent across the board. Oh my god! Yeah, I mean, in, in the industry and everything, it's it's gone up, right? Because material costs have gone up. Yeah, of hyper course. Hyperinflation. You know, you have. Uh, the problems they have, you know, at the docks in Long Beach to get stuff in. They have to air freight stuff in now. They can't. They're not putting it on the boat mm. because it's, it, it gets stuck out there, right? Um, but they had the highest rate increases. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I mean, typical. You would see Memphis uh, kicker five percent, Alpine five percent, but they went twenty five to fifty percent. Man, it was crazy. It's crazy. And on the. Uh... You don't have to get the percentages, but did they give you guys a, a pretty good percentage or would other brands get better? Well, <clears throat> it's about the same, but it okay. makes it really expensive. So let's say, for instance, you wanted a 12-inch you know, W0, mm-hmm. which is normally a $150 speaker, close to 250 bucks. Wow. Yeah, so it's crazy. It's crazy how that, that went up. And we just, you know, we, did, we were pursuing them to be a, a dealer again because we, we said, ah, we, we took away from them because they're not as profitable as... To answer your question, yeah, they're not, some of the stuff is not as profitable as, let's say, our Memphis stuff, as if we buy deep enough with Alpine. Yeah. <clears throat> so we decided not to carry them, and then we're pursuing them to get them on board again. Um, and then once that happened, I was like, I don't want it. Mm, <laughs> There's a lot sure. of other brands out there that are just you know outstanding. JL has done a really good job branding. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell me about that, man, because I'm not I'm not that much of an audiophile, you right. know, and I really like the way that they branded. Mm-hmm. I love their their product that they right. had, but mm-hmm. was it really all that it was cracked out to, to be? be? Um, the stuff is good. Don't get me wrong. I'm not going to say that JL is is not good mm-hmm. because it is. But there are brands that are out there that are better. Um, you know, you have Audis and you have Hertz. Those are uh, European brands. There's an up and coming brand called Blam. Um, there's another brand called Helix, and all these companies are actually out of Europe. So there's a lot of European brands that are starting to emerge here. They've always been in Europe, popular in Europe, but now they're starting to emerge here in the in the states. Mm-hmm. And so um, a lot of the stuff that you know that they make, I mean, they have stuff that's unbelievable. I think Blam has a, a set of speakers, um, five thousand dollars for a set of speakers. Oh wow. But the most unbelievable thing you've ever heard in your life. They have a, uh, a, a tweeter that I heard in one of my guys, one of my sales guys, he put a set of tweeters in his car. $800 set of tweeters. Just the tweeters by themselves. Oh, wow. And I was like, how can you, how is this so much money? I mean, I'm an industry guy. <clears throat> and I go, I couldn't justify spending $800 on a set of tweeters. If you're not a car audio guy, a, t- a set of tweeters could cost you most guys spend a hundred bucks mm-hmm. if you really want to get, you know, fancy, maybe 200 bucks, but $800. I listened to these things, Frank, and I, it was like literally music to my ears. I was like, this is incredible. Like mm-hmm. the way that it sounded, it was warm. I, my hearing is obviously not as good as it used to be. Yeah. And my ears are pretty sensitive now. So I can't take super high frequencies for a long period of time. Um, so, and that's mainly because you know, when you come into my shop and you spend a decent amount of money, I'll spend a good amount of time tuning your system. Mm. So it's not about just installing it and then, you know, turning the dials a couple of times and then making, going, okay, it's good. No, I mean, I'll go in there, I'll sit. There's some times I spend hours in there and mm. they're like, bro, you got to get out of there. We need you somewhere else. <clears throat> so I'll go through different music, uh, whatever genre. So if I if I ask you, Frank, what type of music you listen to? Oh, I listen to hip hop. I listen to you know. Sometimes I'll do some reggae. Okay, cool. So then I'll go, and I'll jump on and I'll tune it according to those you know genres. Mm-hmm. And so, <clears throat> where was I going with this? Oh, the tweeters. <laughs> the tweeters, yeah. <laughs> so I'm listening to these tweeters, and um, they are just again the most amazing thing that I've ever heard in my life. And these things are 
you know, they're very expensive, but worth it. And I could justify, mm. I could justify spending $800 on a set of, on a set of tweeters for sure. Yeah. No doubt. Um, but yeah, those are things that, you know, JL Audio and some of these other American companies, and I'll just name a few, it's yeah. not a big deal, right? You know, Fosgate, the names you heard of, Fosgate, yeah. even brands we carry, Kicker, they're just, you know, household name brands, right? Everyone heard, has heard of that, and those brands, or at least semi heard of those brands. Mm-hmm. But they're not as focused as research on research and development as some of these European companies. Mm, got so, you. so that's why I think that you know JL is not the brand. Not that it's not the brand it used to be. It's just that other companies have elevated their game. Got you. Got and you. They're got not you. elevating their game to that level. Got you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When I was into uh, car audio, um, like I said, JL was was my thing, dude. Mm-hmm. At one time in the Chevelle, I had two thousand ones, two thirteen and a half Dub Sevens. Oh my god! Um, a a four fifty four. Uh, what did I have? Um, in the back, I had six and a half components yeah. and six by nines VR and ZR. Yeah. And then in the front, I had um, I think it was like XR, XR six okay. and a halfs. And dude, it sounded amazing. amazing. I'm sure it did. But <laughs> thinking about it now, I could have probably cut that price in half Mm -hmm. if i would have went like with some re or something like that and Mm -hmm. maybe would have even had a louder system System. yeah i did yeah and there's a a lot of those um, companies that focus on like big base Mm -hmm. those companies come out of of america Mm -hmm. um and yeah they you can get a a, you know re is a good brand um dd is a good brand south digital is a good brand um, Isn't it like Sun something? Sundown. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sundown's a great brand, and you get a lot for your money. So, uh, like you're saying, a 13 W7. Do you have any idea what that costs nowadays? Uh, let me guess. Go for it. Eleven. Like fifteen hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah. No <laughs> shit. For one. <laughs> oh my god. You know what kind of woofer you can get? Well, I don't even think Sundown has a woofer at fifteen hundred dollars, but. A woofer that's similar in sun in sundown, you know, you're gonna spend five six hundred dollars. Yeah, I haven't even seen they have like eights that mm-hmm. are like yeah, that's huge. That's the new thing, man. Like mm-hmm. they, they do these eights that are massive. The woofers are literally as big as the the cone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, you go. How am I gonna get this in the box? The the woofers, the diameter of the uh, magnet's bigger than the woofer itself. <laughs> yeah, but they make those woofers. They design those woofers. To put out tons of bass. And it's a cool thing. We did a, a video on it. Um, Memphis has a line called the Mini Mojo. Mojo is their higher end line. And they did they do these mini mojos. And we did a video where we took it's a single eight inch mojo in a ported box. Okay. And I think the retail was around 350 bucks. And we took a kicker 12 inch in a ported box. And the eight inch was louder than the 12. Mm. And and the price point is right about the same within a few a few bucks. Yeah, it wasn't mm-hmm. like a huge difference. But it's impressive to go, that's an eight? You get in someone's car and they're like, oh man, this is good. What's in there? And you go, a single eight. And yeah. they go, no way. Ah. <laughs> you pop it up and you go, wow, that's coming out of an eight. That's impressive, right? Yeah. Yeah, so it's pretty dope what they've been doing. And that's kind of been a hot category that, that you know, Super built eight inch woofer. So even though it's a it's a small woofer, you're still gonna need a big enclosure though, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. So like to kind of compare um, the the example that I just I gave, that twelve inch box was uh, a, a little bit bigger, but not by much. Mm-hmm. You know, you still need a lot of airspace in order for those things to work well. So you can't put them in a small sealed enclosure and have it go away. It has to be bigger, bigger boarded for sure. Got you. So. Um, Talking about JL and their branding, um, you guys do great branding as well, man. Thanks, man. I think Just, you guys do too. Thank you. <laughs> that, that, I've been always impressed with you. I mean, I jump on your Instagram, um, and I'm like, man, he's, he's doing good. And you know, I see your, you. your your followers are you know increasing. And I'm like, you, you got a great brand, and people I think can relate to it. Um, and it's you know it's a it's a niche that you've really done a really good job with, man. You found you know we had a little interview earlier and I was talking to you about how it started and you're like I, I needed something I found it you know I need just like any great entrepreneur I needed something yeah. there wasn't really a need that was available to everybody so I had to go around these these hoops to, to get it and then once I found it people were asking me how I got it and I figured mm-hmm. out 
how to get it and then create my own. Yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. I feel like that's the best way to start a business mm-hmm. if you fix a, a problem, right? You know, and at that time, people didn't even know it was a problem, right? <laughs> and I'm sure that you yeah. run into that every once in a while. You right. know, somebody comes in and they say, "Hey, in my Camry, I, I blew a speaker. Mm-hmm. Can we switch it out?" Yeah, and then you know, you kind of just understand what they're looking for and mm-hmm. like, hey. You don't even know that you need this. this. <laughs> come, come, you, come, check this out. Come listen to this. Yeah. So, um, I see the, the breakers. You guys are, like I said, we're really good with marketing on social media and YouTube and things like that. When did you guys start implementing um, using new technology uh, like social media? Oh, okay. Great question. So, um, you know, for many, many years. We were on the radio, and we don't run the. We run some radio ads, but not as many as we used to. Mm-hmm. Um, but people would, they would know us from our radio ads. Yeah. And so I just continued to kind of run that, and then I would do um, flyers, you know, put flyers on people's cars. I would mail out, you know, to, so just very basic forms mm. of, um, you know, advertising, just kind of what I knew. <clears throat> and then you and you start to realize, hey man, this stuff's not really working anymore. <laughs> You're yeah. spending all this money all this effort and it's just not like padding out. Did you realize, or do you remember when things started to, to taper down as far as like the old way of marketing versus the new way of marketing? Yeah. You know what? I want to say like, I want to say like mid two thousands. Okay. Yeah. So mid two thousands, like I think you only had Facebook at that point. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Maybe there was Instagram, but it wasn't as big. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think what we did was um, we, you know, we, Put up a page and then um, a couple pictures, a couple posts, very, very basic stuff. Wasn't a whole lot back then. I think I hired someone to do some stuff and it was expensive back then to get mm. stuff done. Yeah. Just <laughs> like, create this ad for me. <gasps> okay, 250 bucks. What? Yeah. <laughs> and at that point, I said, um, you know, he did a couple and I already knew how to use Photoshop mm. um, because my mentor, Bob, that's what he would do. He would always be on Photoshop and kind of, and I would peek back there. I'm like, oh, how are you doing this? And he was like showing me how to do it. And I'm like, oh, wow, this is great. So I learned how to use it um, through him and then through myself and, of course, through tutorials on YouTube. And I started to, um, you know, create, you know, little ads and stuff on Facebook, and that got really responsive. And then one day, um, there was a guy that worked for us uh, by the name of Matt. He came in, and he had this little, like, camera thing, right? And this was before the cameras on your phone were really good. Okay. And he he was like, we're going to make YouTube videos. And I'm like, okay, um, let's do it. And I wasn't really into it, and he did a couple. Mm-hmm. And um, we're getting phone calls from like people across the country. And they're like, hey, I saw your video on YouTube. And at that point, <clears throat> um, we would get like flooded with calls. Because mm-hmm. this is very early stages of YouTube, and I wish that we would have taken this, uh, this approach uh, yeah, earlier. Because sure. we have a YouTube channel now that we're building, um, but if I, we started it back in 2005, <laughs> yeah. it would have been, <laughs> who knows, right? But we, we, we kind of made the mistake, and I kind of thought it was annoying, because people would call and ask questions, and my sales guys would be like, oh, it's another YouTube call. And the guy would sit on the phone with him for 5, 10, 15 minutes asking him questions with no intention to buy mm. from us, because we didn't have a, we didn't have a way to, to sell anybody anything. Yeah. Because it was just, we had a website, and the website was like, this is what we do, this is where we're located. Here's Give the us ad a to call. come through, yeah. Exactly, come through. No way to purchase anything. Um, and so we actually tapered down on the, the YouTube and I took a, I took a few, uh, videos off that would create a lot of calls oh. <laughs> because the guys would get bogged down. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and so, <laughs> and so, um, that was our first start with YouTube. And then, you know, it marinated in my mind and I'm like, we should probably be online. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and it really, it really took me a while to, to get around to that notion. Whereas, Hey, we all shop online. Cause if I told you, Hey Frank, um, if you want to buy something really quick and you want it like tomorrow and you didn't have time to go to the store, where would you get it? And you would say, Bro, I've ordered things on the podcast while I'm talking. Exactly. Right. <laughs> yeah. People are, people do that. So Amazon has really changed our way of um, buying things. And in the very near future, um, it's going to be where there's not going to be a lot of brick and mortar stores out there. 
Yeah. Like really, like I was seriously, I have a newborn. Um, Congratulations. Thank man. you. Yeah. Uh, two weeks old. That's right. Yeah. And my wife is consistently buying stuff and she hasn't left the house. She left the house once to go to a doctor's appointment. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm like, hey, where did the baby get this? Where did the baby get this? And she was like, oh, I just ordered it on Amazon. So she's not leaving the house and she's just buying stuff for the baby. Yeah. Right. So you don't have to go to the store anymore. You just pick up your phone and you order it. And I was like, there has to be, there's a way that we have to figure this out. For sure. Because if we don't figure this out, then we're going to be out of business here soon. Right. And I think there, there'll be a, there'll always be a business, I think, a small business for installation. Because obviously people are not going to want to install their own stuff. Especially you got a brand new car. You know, people like you um, that are busy with other things in Definitely, their life. Yeah. Like, why would I spend a day of my life installing a stereo system in my car when I can pay somebody Mm -hmm. to do it, right? So I don't think that that'll ever go away. But people walk in with stuff and they're like, hey, I need this installed. And you're like, well, how come you didn't buy it for me? And they go, well, I was home and I just saw it online. It was just easy to do it. And then I said, all right, so we have to figure this thing out. I got to build a website out. I got to be able to sell stuff online. You know, um, I got to be able to drive traffic into that website. But... If, we, if I can talk about this, because this may be a long conversation. Let's do it, bro. <laughs> Marketing online is tough, man. Mm. Let me tell you. Um, and, you know, what we found is we were able to create a YouTube channel that reviews products, right? Because a lot of times what happens, you want to buy something, it's kind of expensive. Yeah. It's a box at a store on the shelf, maybe, or it's a picture on Amazon that you're looking at. But you want to maybe have the experience of, you know, a full demonstration. But you don't want to go into the store to get the, <clears throat> the demonstration from the salesperson. Yeah. Because you don't have time or, the, you know, you have a bad stigma around salespeople. Um, and you just want to sit on, you know, sit in your bed on your phone or maybe at your desk on your computer and, you know, do the research on your own, mm-hmm. right? And so where do you go? YouTube. Yeah, for sure. Right? So you go on YouTube and then you go, okay, oh, oh, this guy did a review on this radio that I'm looking at. Let's check it out. And so um, we thought, okay, if we can bring kind of the same experience in our store, on our channel, we can get people, you know, to our website. And that's kind of been our business model Um, lately. And I hired a full-time, well, a a semi-full-time video editor. Got you. Um, Sal, can we bring him in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's let's cool. go to bring him in. Uh, you can bring that chair in if you want, real quick, Sal. Let me jump in here. Yeah, I would like to pick your brain, dude, because uh, one of my passions is uh, creating content. Yeah. And videos. Right. Um, oh, you you got the you got the little chair, bro. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you can swing this around, bro. There you go. Jump on here. So. Um, how did you get into creating content for Josh or just, or just, in just in, in general, in high school, um, started making videos on my phone with my friends and editing on the phone. So how long ago was that when uh, you were in high school? 2016. Okay. 2016. Got it. 2016. Yeah. That, that's the thing about like your generation, bro, is that you're, you're born into it. So to you, it's just like, Oh yeah, you just make a video. But to like Josh and I, it's like, Oh dude, you just did that yeah. on your phone. <laughs> You know, yeah. so uh, what what kind of videos were you into at first? Um, we, like vlogging and stuff. Like okay. just with my friends and like my best friend. Um, his name is Brawley. We started a YouTube channel, mm-hmm. and then once I got a co- into college, we, they gave us that Paps and money. Uh huh. And I got a camera. I got like a Canon T six. Okay. I and a Mac. Oh, nice. So that's kind of how I started. So transition uh, from the phone to the camera. So at first, I'm assuming what like iMovie app on your phone. Yeah, iMovie. And, and then, then uh, and then now you move to a Mac. Yeah. What do you? Cut. You're on Final Cut now. Yeah, awesome, right. dude. That's yeah, that that's so cool, bro. There's like, I don't think that there's that much because um, there's so much of it. I don't think there's that much appreciation for people who actually create content. But I was watching one of the videos that you did on the on the Instagram channel of uh, of Sema. And it's so beautiful how you put it together, you know, and it's just, if you're not a content creator, you'll probably just miss it, you know, and like you were saying, like, this is the best video that we've created and it's not getting that as many views as it should be. 
but it, it's just like it'll hit one day for sure all you got to do is just keep keep going at your yeah. craft you know so what other uh so what made you guys connect how did how did that happen all right so sal came in with a buddy of his um about two years ago year and a half ago right and they're like hey i can make a we can make a video for you and i'm like okay that's cool and at this point i had a, a video editor okay oh, really? i did yeah i had one and he was um he he was good um, but we didn't click on, on a couple different levels. And so I said, okay, yeah, go for it. How much is it going to cost? And I think it was like a hundred bucks, 80 bucks. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't that much. So I said, all right, what do I got to lose? A hundred bucks, not a big deal. 80 bucks, whatever it is. <laughs> he put it together and I was like, and the guy that I was working with, was, you know, mid thirties, older guy. Mm. Right. And like these guys are freaking kids, man. Yeah. And this is pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I called Sal up and I said, um, hey, um, I have this YouTube idea that I want to, you know, that's been in my mind for years and I just haven't had the, uh, the time and, you know, the drive to really get this thing done, but I think we can get this thing done. And I really want to just do a bunch of videos on like uh, products. Okay. So let's do a contract for like, you know, 10, right? And I think we signed a, a contract for like a thousand bucks or something like yeah. that. And um, he, he came in with uh, his buddy. And I think one day we knocked out two videos and it took a while for editing. I had no idea editing took so much time, you know, no idea. Yeah. This guy spends the majority of his life in front of a computer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so shooting the video is, um, is pretty easy, but putting it all together to make it look, you know, awesome and great yeah. is a whole nother story. And he just brings a whole nother level um, that is, you know, you, and like you said, you miss it if you're not doing it, right? You miss how great the shots are. Yeah. You miss how um, how well it's put together. You miss how it flows, yeah. how it keeps your attention, right? But the moment that you don't have it right, yeah. you notice it. And for they're sure. like, I'm out. I don't want to watch this for whatever reason. It's not, it's not flowing good enough. Um, it doesn't look good enough. The audio is not good. Whatever it may be, yeah. right? And because there's so much composition out there, you really have to be on point in order for people to like really, really hone in on your channel. You know, I, I never thought about that, like uh, how subliminal it really is to mm -hmm. to like the viewer. You know, mm -hmm. if somebody's watching a video, it, even for myself, mm -hmm. I'll watch a video and something will make me lose my attention on mm -hmm. it. You know, just. Right. Swipe it away. Right. And then others, it'll make me, oh, I'm grabbed in. So then I'll watch like a five minute video, which now is like super crazy. It's like, oh, you watched all five minutes? You know, you <laughs> right? show like your right. your wife, you say, hey, can you watch this? Record? How long is it? Like, yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, really, right? Yeah. But Sal, when you're, when you're making a video, uh, what are some of the thoughts that are going through your head? Like, um, like paint the picture for it. Like, for like as far as today, yeah, like the video um, that we did today. Well, today Josh was texting me. He's like, yo, we'll be at this address today. <laughs> but um, I asked him, he's like, I'm like, what kind of video? He's like, like an interview style video. So obviously I got to bring audio, camera, mm -hmm. make sure everything's charged, memory cards, stuff like that. Got it. And me and Josh have worked over for like a year already. So we kind of already know what the deal is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Film it, then get the B-roll, edit it, publish yeah. So so when you decided to go into breakers, what was your motivation with that? Why breakers? Why 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 was it even car audio? Mm -mm. So at 2019, like late 2019, mm -hmm. I hadn't we had no clients obviously, so I would walk into different establishments like barbershops or restaurants, mm. stuff like that. It wasn't even just car audio. There was a lot of no's, a few yeses like mm -hmm. Josh. Mm -hmm. Um but I had sought another ad for another car stereo story that i'm not gonna name mm -hmm. but so i'm like you know what let me just go to breakers because i looked at their instagram like they didn't really have like they had videos but not like got you you know so we we're like i told my buddy i was like come in with me because i don't want to go by myself yeah <laughs> and uh it took forever to get a hold of josh i don't know if you tried to get a hold of this guy it took like 30 minutes we were waiting in the <laughs> store but um he said yeah and then we came back shot it like in 30 minutes and then edited it oh very cool, it was a big dude. deal for me because i had not worked with like like uh because breakers is pretty recognizable now mm -hmm. like in the county so to have that under my portfolio was pretty cool very cool man yeah. um 
congratulations bro that's so <laughs> cool just to for you guys to be working together and for you too to have somebody young on the team and just be able to create with and i know how it is when you have an idea and and you just think and you're uh it's like man i want to do this but i don't know who could help me with it you know and dude that that's like that's so cool for you just to have that hustle inside of you too just to be out basically going door to door with yeah. your skills and say, hey, this is what I do. You know, did, did you did you learn that from somewhere, or was that just 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 came natural to you? So I saw it on YouTube. This other person was doing it, but for photos, he mm -hmm. was like, you know what? If you don't have clients, you know what? You could always just go door to door, I guess. Yeah. And you're gonna get a lot of no's, but you, someone might say yes. Yeah. So that's kind of what I did, and I thought I could do it. So. Very cool, cool, man. Awesome, bro. Um. Last thing, uh, do you have one piece of content that you've created that you're just like, yo, this is this is the best that I've ever done? That SEMA video that yeah. got no love on the channel. <laughs> Man, Josh was out. I, I forgot where you were, but he was out for a couple of days, so I was just working on it yeah. at the shop. And he had he didn't know I was going to be like that. I was kind of putting it together. And I was I told um, Tony, the general manager, I, I was showing him. He's like, dude, we got to show Josh. I'm like, wait, not yet. Let me just... Finish it most. Let me wrap it up more, and then I'll show it to him. Yeah, and then uh, I sent it to him, and it was, it was. I was like, oh, I when I feel like it's pretty good because we make videos, obviously, but you know, it's like a process now. Like we've seen it over and over, like reviews or stuff like that. But this was something new. Yeah, and I thought it was pretty cool. But it's always the videos you love the most that don't get any love. <laughs> yeah, and it's the videos yes. that the videos that you don't really care about they get like half a million <laughs> views. So, I can totally agree with yeah. that, bro. But uh, yeah, we'll actually put that video in the link yeah, of the yeah. podcast. So if you guys want to check it out. Yeah, that video is, let me tell you, <laughs> this guy's got a lot of talent. And um, when he sent it to me, I usually watch it with my wife. And my wife is the biggest critic in the world. Mm. Let me tell you. <laughs> That's a gift and a curse. It is. Because I think it's perfect. And Sal thinks it's, it's perfect. And then she'll go and go, you know what? Um, and it's already done at this point, right? <laughs> <clears throat> we should do it like this. Or we should do it like this. Or let me give you a suggestion to do it like this. And of course, like, oh, my God, we just finished it. It's good. And then we'll go, okay, fine. And then we'll do it. And it's like, yeah, you know, your suggestion, you know, mm -hmm. made a lot of difference. She watched this video and said, it's perfect. And it was the first time she said not to change anything. No way. Because <laughs> it was that good. Yeah, it really is a good video. If you go, uh, it's, it's, I think it's just SEMA. SEMA 2021, Breaker Stereo. If okay. you search that on, on YouTube, but if you want to leave the link. That'd be yeah, cool. we'll put the link below, man. Well. Um, this, yeah. yeah, from one creator to another, dude. That's I, I always want to ask that question because like, I have those same type of videos like uh we we always have an annual black friday sale so mm -hmm. it's called bolt friday mm -hmm. so we don't oh, run nice. any sales throughout the year we yeah. don't have any promo codes any uh any sales throughout the whole year yeah. until it comes bolt friday and it's become um a tradition where people just go crazy on that day dude. Nice. they buy all their stuff yeah. Yeah. they get it ready for their build that they're doing or for the next year or what have you mm -hmm. and um We'll always do some kind of funny video or something like that. Like oh, the okay. year before, I did a podcast with myself. Mm -hmm. So I like did a split screen. <laughs> and then uh, I was interviewing myself and I actually got upset with myself because all I was doing <laughs> was just talking about the sale. You know, dude, I didn't bring you on here to promo the sale. <laughs> so every funny. video was kind of about the sale. But then last cool. year, um, I, I want to show it to you guys before you leave. Yeah, uh, I did a video with my son and I, and I had a concept of my son he's gets in trouble at home he gets kicked out of the house he's mm -hmm. a skater he's out in the streets trying to figure out what he's gonna do and then at the end he's like uh goes to the shop which is here he mm -hmm. comes to the shop because he's like i gotta talk to my dad i gotta i gotta figure this out because my uh my plans of staying with my friends or what have <laughs> you those aren't working mm -hmm. so he comes to the shop and there's already a line outside and he's like <laughs> he doesn't realize it because he has his own life going on mm -hmm. so he's like hey what's going on here and he says oh it's bolt friday and boom that was the ad oh <laughs> that's <laughs> but cool it was, it was it was more about that's cool like that's creative, yeah. that i have my opportunity now yeah. to create mm -hmm. something right and um i i think that that's more important than getting sales I don't yeah. know. I don't know if that makes sense to, and, and and that's kind of like goes against 
being an entrepreneur mm-hmm. and a business owner, right. but you have to, you have to feed all the passions right. that are inside of you. Right. And that, that creativity, passion, mm-hmm. that one's one that I, I, I can't leave alone, dude, because yeah. I'm sure you could agree if you don't do a video for, you know, a few weeks or whatever, you're like, dude, I gotta, I gotta do something, <laughs> something. man. Yeah, for <clears throat> sure. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And uh, yeah, and for me too, um, you know, I'm really, we have a good relationship, Sal and I, as far as a work relationship is concerned. And there, there are times where I get engulfed in it. I mean, I've got a million things that I do at Breakers, but when, when it's like video time, it's video time, man. Yeah. We, we, are, we sit down together and, you know, we're glued to it and we're throwing, bouncing ideas off of each other. And uh, a lot of times uh, my other obligations and my other people will walk into the office and they're like, yo, how long are you going to be here? Aren't you got other things to do? And I'm like, I know, I'm five more minutes. And you know, five more minutes turns into like five hours. <laughs> yeah. Josh is the most busiest guy I've ever met in my life. Like, because I'm, I'm luckily, I'm blessed enough to be surrounded by business owners. Josh is like, I don't know how he does it. He, com- he comes up with the videos, scripts them, um, storylines them, and then he'll, uh, I'll edit it, but he'll yeah. be there with me sometimes. Yeah. And then he'll proof it, and then make thumb- he'll make the thumbnails. I don't even make the thumbnails. He, he does the thumbnails on Photoshop. Yeah, posts it, tags YouTube, everything. Well, that's the thing, man. If you want to be successful in your field, you gotta you gotta go go go. You know, you gotta think of every minute that you have throughout the day as this is my opportunity to get to this goal. You know, and uh, the only way you're gonna get there is you gotta take one step at a time. And uh, Josh is just running, bro. Josh has to deal with. So a typical day, I'll get there, what, like 10? I'll get like 10, 10, 30? Yeah. He, he's, he's there like at 8, maybe? He has to deal with all the customer service, all the installers that have problems every day, because there's always like a hiccup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, calls coming in. There's no one on the sales floor. Josh, Josh will run out there, talking to customers on the phone. Like, uh, he does everything. So. That's what... He's, 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 so we're so we're obviously designing the website too. Yeah. Um. Shout out to Mario. He's the website designer. Mm-hmm. Josh is in there too. So he's like back and forth the video editing, and then he's like with the coding of the website, and he's just like back and forth, and it's admiring to see Josh how he can handle everything. It's now you have crazy. a mentor as well, man. Yeah. Just like you had, you know, you pass on that knowledge, and uh, hopefully you have somebody that is able to receive it. Yeah. And appreciates the knowledge that that you're giving off, you know, because yeah. the things that you do, it's important I'm sure that. to you, it's just second nature. Mm-hmm. But to somebody else like yourself, you're like, how do you do that? Yeah. You know, you just got to train yourself. And yeah. You just got to stick to it. Yeah. And he has it in him. Um, you know, he's got his own. He, he, he doesn't just do work for us. So he's got his own business as well. Um, and you know, he'll, uh, he'll film for other companies as well as long as they're car audio companies, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. So Sal, what's your, uh, what's your social media and we'll tag you on the bottom. My personal is Sal X A N G. Okay. And then I just started my business. Instagram is A N G video works. The A N G video works. All right. Cool. Hey, yeah. congratulations, man. Appreciate it. I wish you the best of success. Thank you, brother. For sure. Yeah. So, he's, he'll definitely be successful. I mean, he's got, you know, his skills are, are, are really good. His excellent skills. Um, you know, I love to keep them for, you know, <laughs> at Breaker solely. But <clears throat> the thing is with uh, with people of talent, people that have that hustle in them because he has it in them, you can't hold them down yeah. too long. So, you know, I'm going to try to hold on to him as, as long as I possibly can. I know he'll still be there for me when I need him. Yeah. For um, sure. But, you know, that's just the thing. You know, you, 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 uh, you work with great people and they will eventually, you know, move on to their their own thing. Mm-hmm. If they have it with it, you know, and I'm not saying, Hey, people can be great workers and have lots of talent and work for somebody for many, many years. And you know, and that's all great too. But sometimes people want more, you know yeah. what I mean? And he's definitely, he definitely wants more and he's young too. So he's got, he's got that hunger in him. So yeah. And that's awesome that you saw that when he came and showed you that video that you saw that mm-hmm. you know, he had something. Cause if not, you wouldn't have given the opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. So speaking of all the uh, the daily tasks that you have oh and things God, that you got to yeah. do, <laughs> let's let's paint a picture. Typical typical day. What's it looking like? All right. So from from start to finish. finish. All right. So I, I probably wake up around seven or so. I get a, I get my son ready for um, for school. I scoot him off to school. 
And how old is your son in school? He's five. He's in kindergarten. Okay. And the, and your uh, the baby that you just had yep. uh, is yeah. a boy or a girl? I'm girl. Sorry. A girl. What's her name? Her name is Phoenix. Oh, Phoenix. Yeah. Oh, how beautiful. Yeah, yeah. And then my son's name is uh, Maximus. Okay. Shout yeah, out he, to Maximus. Yeah. Shout out to him. He's got a, a big personality. Awesome. <laughs> so five years old. Take him out to school. Yeah. Take him out to school. Then I come home and then um, I work out. And I got a little home gym that I have mm. save me some time so I don't have to go to the gym and then drive back. So I'm just, boom, I'm in and out 40, 40 minutes or so. And is this a daily thing? This is a daily thing. Seven yeah. days a week? Except Monday because I have morning meeting Monday at 8.15. <laughs> Got you. Okay. So 45 minute workout, yep. Yep. Six, and, six days out of the week. Yep. Okay. All right. And then, uh, then I had to work and we kind of get things going. Um, I, I touch with my, um, I touch up on uh, whatever's going on on the website. So Mario is my guy. Uh, he's our full-time book web developer. But we have teams in India that we work with. Okay. Because um, it would be almost impossible for him to do the tasks that he needs to do. So we do an overview as to what needs to get done. A little quick 10-minute meeting with him. Um, and then I get him on his way. Um, then I'll you know meet with my, uh, my general manager briefly. My wife kind of takes care of... Some of that with, with him, so I'm not too worried about that. But then, you know, Sal shows up around 1030 or so, and then we'll start to cut some videos. And we'll, um, you know, get interrupted <laughs> a lot, fortunately. Yeah. Um, people will come into the office, and they're like, oh, I need this solved, I need this solved. And, oh, there's a guy on the phone that insists on talking to you. He says he's known you since high school. Mm. <laughs> so that happens a lot. Or, oh, there's a guy on the phone that's insisting on talking to you. He's... You know, he follows you on YouTube. Mm. So I'll take those calls. Um, and then, you know, the orders come in in the morning. Um, we'll process orders in the morning, online orders in the morning. So then it's a hustle. Right now, we really, really don't have um, <clears throat> a team behind fulfilling orders. We just kind of do it with the staff that we currently gotcha. have. So the sales guys will uh, fill the orders, uh, contact the customers, give them tracking numbers, things of that nature. Okay, so you have a full e-commerce website. Yes, we have a full e-commerce website. We just launched our new site in November of last year. So you can buy all your car your stuff online. Very cool. And then uh, the big, biggest, one of the biggest things for us was financing, even you know here mm -hmm. uh, at the store. Um, so we have a lot of different financing options for our customers and, um, and that's where really worked out well for us. Um, so yeah, so that's that. And then as we start to grow, then of course we're going to hire some people full, full time and things of that nature. I mean, my goal is to get us them. It's a huge goal, but I'm trying to get, we're, we're you know, we're doing all that we can. We got a plan to get to hundred million a year. I mean, that is my freaking goal. I love it. Is to get there. Right. <clears throat> because I, I see it. I see the vision and, um, we went to. Uh, Wisconsin. Uh, I took Sal with me. We went to Wisconsin and we met with, um, are you familiar with uh, custom offsets or uh, fitment industries? Mm, no. No? Okay. So they're a huge e-commerce site and they do wheels and tires. Um, custom offsets is their truck brand. Okay. Um, fitment industries is their import brand. Okay. So we went there, um, we met with the CEO, I've been messaging him, and he's a, a bit of a, a mentor uh, towards me, or to me, I should say, and uh, we've messaged each other throughout the years, and I've seen his business grow, like, leaps and bounds, like, beyond anything I can ever imagine. Like, the first time I watched one of his videos, I was actually just looking for a set of wheels for my own truck, and I noticed his channel, and I'm watching his channel, and they've got really good content, and then they had this thing on their website, which was a, um, a gallery that I had never seen before, which is you can put your year, your make, your model, and then let's say I wanted a set of 24 inch wheels, mm -hmm. and I wanted the tires to be 37 inches is tall, and I want them to be 14 inches wide on the wheel, and I wanted a 10 inch lift. Mm -hmm. Well, I can put all those parameters in, boom, and then all these trucks will come up with those exact parameters. So instead of guessing in your mind, like, I what think it's going to look like. Yeah, you can actually look at it, yeah. right? Or you see one on the street and you go, oh, that looks cool, but I don't know what it, it is exactly. So Sean really took this concept of creating a gallery um, online so that people can actually see what it looks like on their vehicle, right? Because before that, there was, a, uh, there was a website that we used to go to, and I, I, I always forget the name, Car Domain. You ever heard of that before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Car Domain, <clears throat> right, for those of you who are not familiar, it was a like a social media type website for your car so let's say you have you know what year is your car 
Um, 2020. So you have a 2020 BMW um, M8. Yeah. And you put wheels on it and you lowered it, right? And so you would put that on there. You put like maybe 10 pictures. And then if you got around to it, you would put your, the specs. Mm -hmm. So you would go, okay, these are 20 by 9s in the front, 20 by 11s in the back. This is the tire. I'm running 245, 30. Five in the front and a 295, 30 in the back. And then you go, okay, cool. This is what this looks like. Oh, and I put um, these uh, IBAC uh, or H&R lowering springs on it, mm -hmm. right? <clears throat> so you have that information and you go, okay, cool. I want my car to look like this. This is exactly the specs I need. So I just go into my car stereo shop or the performance shop and I go, this is what I want. These are the tires that I want. You know, make it happen. Yeah. Make it look this way. Or they wouldn't leave a description and you would have to guess. Gotcha. And you'd be like, damn, what are these? Trying to zoom in. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we did that. We, we, we used to do that. Like, oh, there's no description. Let's zoom in. Zoom in. Oh, it's too blurry. I can't make it out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? So, <clears throat> so for me, there was a need for always for that. My sales guys, too, because we would always be on that car domain website. <clears throat> Got you. And then, it, you know, then whatever. I think got bought out by some bigger company and they just let it go. Well, he, he decided, Sean decided, well, I'm going to do uh, a, a gallery like this. Right. And I looked at it and I was like, wow, this is mind blowing. Right. So I started to follow him a little more and I went back and I looked at some of his videos. He actually pitched, um, I think he pitched Shark Tank because mm. I, I remember seeing a Shark Tank uh, a video. I don't think he actually got on the show. But anyway, um, his story was like he started at that time, I think, love that. Yeah, the time I watched the video, like eight years back, he had started this company pretty much out of his garage, mm -hmm. right? Um, and they showed his garage and he's kind of processing orders and they had a little setup with computers and stuff. And then he moved to a facility where they were actually doing truck lifts and things of that nature. And then I watched, he had an, an, here's another channel that's just him. Um, and it's very small. And he was basically saying, look, you can um, open a car, or you can open a, a, a shop. Like how I, he has a, so basically he had a shop that did wheels and tires, like a brick and mortar shop. You can go to buy wheels and tires. And then he had an online company that obviously sold everything online. So you can open a shop, right? And, you know, hire a few guys and have a good living. But what's the most you're going to make? Yeah. I mean, you'd be lucky to make $100,000. Like not so many people, not a lot of people make $100,000. And that's a lot of money, right? But you're limited to that, mm -hmm. right? And he's like, if you really want to, make some good money you got to go online because that's just way where it's going and so he took that company out of his garage and we met with him when when did we go to wisconsin oh you guys actually went out there yeah we met with him it was uh it was in the fall fall last year okay we went out there and uh, we met with him he's super cool he was actually moving this is how great this guy is he was moving to florida and he was like there's moving, I'm packing my stuff up right now as we speak, but I know we planned this thing. So I'm going to give you my, you know, I'll give you, I can give you to like four or five o'clock and mm -hmm. it was in the morning and I'm like, wow. And he was like, and I'm literally after this, I got to go finish packing because I'm leaving tomorrow. Mm. So, and he was like, I barely started packing. So he took, he took his time <clears throat> and uh, we went out to his uh, facility. He has two big buildings. He has one building that's custom offices across the street is um, Fitment Industries. And on the one side, it, I mean, it was literally like a car show. So the guys there are totally into, you know, trucks or cars. They're total enthusiasts. Mm -hmm. And that's what's great about his companies. He hires just enthusiasts, right? And that shows through. Just like you said, you have to be passionate about it, right? And it's not so much about, you know, focusing on just getting the sale and doing the sale. It's about just showing your passion about it. And, and that just shows through. And people can resonate with that. And they'll buy from you just based on, you know, based on that factor. So he has these two big, big buildings. We went into both of them, and there were, God, man, how many people were there? Hundreds and hundreds of people. No way. I am not BSing you, bro. There were, there, they had, okay, I have one guy doing my website. There was literally like 150 guys on the website Yeah. entering stuff in. Now, we have teams in India that enter in products, and they were entering in products too. But the scale, the way he scaled this thing from eight years ago was like unbelievable to me. And, and then he goes, okay, I have something else to show you. And it's down the road. Follow me. So we go, <clears throat> jump in the car. And there was five of us, six of us, right? <laughs> it was me, my wife, uh, Tony, our general manager, Sal, and we brought Maximus with us. Mm. So we're in this little car. And we head down the street, and they're building this facility. And I am not kidding. You seen the big building out in uh, Camarillo for uh, Amazon? Amazon? Yeah. 
It was like half the size of that. Really? Oh my God. It was huge. I was like, oh my God. We walk in there. About the same size? The South has said the same size. It's like bigger, it's like bigger than Costco. Wow. It is it was they're just building they were just building it. And he goes, We just built this thing and and we we went in there and they had robots that were pulling wheels and tires from yeah, it was crazy. He was like, Oh yeah, that's a robot and that's a robot. And we're like, Oh my god, this is So they're not even manufacturing, phone. they're just uh, they're just selling. They're selling. He does own a brand though um, called Archon Wheels. Okay, um, and then they also have another brand um, for the import side as well. I don't know. I don't remember the name of that one. Got you. But he was like, "We're gonna hit a, a, a half a billion dollars this year." Wow. Yeah, man. And it was like eye opening, and it was inspiring. And I'm like, "We're gonna do a hundred million dollars a year." Yeah. I don't. I don't care what we have to do. We're gonna do it. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do car stereo. We're gonna do performance. We're gonna do everything that you could possibly want to do to your car. We're gonna we're gonna sell that stuff online. So, from before you started e-commerce mm -hmm. to now having e-commerce, have you noticed a big jump in the in uh, business? Well, the e-commerce business is still building. So we we okay, launched gotcha. yeah we launched in, in November. Okay, and I still haven't quite figured that out yet. Um, so we're, we, we're driving traffic through YouTube, which is good, but we have our subscriber base is not that it's gotcha. 23,000 last I checked. Um, and then we're, we're trying to, I'm really just trying to figure out Google on how to, you know, advertise strategically to get people to the site and have them buy from us because we have, as far as car audio products, we have thousands and thousands of car audio products on mm -hmm. there. And now we're working on uh, suspension. That's our next big thing suspension. Um, and I really want to reach out back out to Sean, um, the you know the owner of Custom Assets and Fitment Industry, and ask him, hey, um, what's my next step here, man? Because I've done all this. Yeah. What what was something that you took away from him that that just really set off a, a light in your head? Like, wow, why didn't I think about it like that? Well, a couple of things. Okay, so one of the things was, like at that point, I didn't have anyone that was working on the website full time. I had a team in India. Um, and it's tough if you, you ever outsourced to India? No. So it's tougher. There's a, um, there's a language barrier. Um, they speak English, but it's not that great. And I mean, you, you can get through it, but it just takes some time to do it. And there's also a time issue as well. So they're like, you know, 12, 13 hours ahead of mm. us or behind us, whatever it may be. I'm not hundred percent sure. All I know is we're not on the same time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I feel you. All I know is when I'm going to sleep, they're going to work. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you get those and last minute texts. Right. You're like, dude, I'm about to go to sleep. Right. What's up? Right. Exactly. Um, but I was like, I have to get someone in here full time that mm. I can sit down with and do this with. And we brought Mario in. Um, you know, he has a, a, a degree in uh, computer engineering and I was lucky to land him. And he does a good job and we're able to kind of sit down and kind of get, work through the problems together. Whereas if I had an issue before in the past, I'd have to call India and it may take a week to resolve where I can just walk into his office and go, hey, this isn't working. We got to get this up. And he'll have it done in like two hours. Got you, got you, got you. Right. But, but to answer your question, what was the biggest thing? The biggest thing, I, the biggest takeaway I had from that trip and meeting him is it's freaking possible. Mm -hmm. It's possible to do this because someone's done it before. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that was definitely the biggest thing I, I took away from that. Beautiful, man. So let's talk about actually the, the services that you guys offer mm -hmm. there. Um, it's not just put a stereo in a deck. No, not anymore. And yeah. a satellite radio. You still do satellite radio? <laughs> <laughs> we, you know, believe it or not, we do. No. It's unbelievable. Yeah, we, I ordered, you know, we ordered like six at a time and they just, I don't know where they go. Either the guys are stealing them or like they eat them for lunch. But... <laughs> I don't think anyone's still in them. But oh, oh my god! <laughs> but they, they, we just constantly have to reorder them. I don't know. It's weird. That was an era, bro. The, it the, was. The... It was right. <laughs> yeah, that and then the GPSs. Right. There. Yeah. That and was then, yeah when you were working there, right? Before yeah. you could do everything uh, on your phone. Now you, you don't need none of that. <laughs> you don't. You don't. But people still buy. I don't yeah. Know, yeah. I mean, there's a serious app. You know, you can. Yeah. Just use use that. You got it. <laughs> I got this for Christmas ten years ago. <laughs> I'm finally installing it. <laughs> Uh, but so, so what, what are some of the things that you guys offer? So we do, um, we moved into suspension, uh, about five years ago, we, we decided that, Hey, and that was one thing that I got from Bob, my mentor is he's always a forward thinker and he's like, okay, look, cardio is, um, it's, 
on its way, you know. At that point, when we had this conversation, it was like pretty sustained. It's not growing, mm-hmm. you know. And then I started to see it kind of s- slip down. And he said, well, we got to bring other things in here. So he brought wheels and tires in, I don't know, 15 years ago, mm-hmm. when no other car stereo shop would do wheels. I mean, no other car stereo shop would do, was doing wheels and tires. I mean, if you wanted wheels and tires, you went to the, the tire store. Yeah. On to go get them. And then he, he was like one of the first to bring those in. And we thought that, well, that was weird. Why are you bringing in wheels and tires? We do stereos. Mm. Right? And so <clears throat> that was a really big category for us, or still is a really, really big category for us. Um, and I thought, yeah, you know what? There's, we've got to, we've got to do other things, you know? And so, um, the next thing logically was suspension because yeah. at this point people were starting to lift their trucks a lot more than before. And we're from Oxnard and you know that people were like the lower stuff. So they were lower trucks. Yeah. And then I don't know, man, like four years ago, five years ago, people just started to want to lift their vehicles. Right. And our, um, community is mainly Hispanic. Mm-hmm. And I had a lower truck. Should I? I had two lower trucks. <laughs> Never thought once about lifting a truck mm. until about five years ago. Okay. When it started to get popular. I mean, I'm half white, so I'm going to say this, but only the white guys, you know, lift their trucks. Got you. Right. And all of a sudden, our customers are like, I want to lift my truck. I want to, you know, six inch lift. I want to level my truck. I want these big off road wheels. And we're like, we got to get into this. Yeah. Right. So we, um, we installed a lift, hired a mechanic full time and that took off. And so we hired, we got another lift, hired another mechanic full time and those guys stay pretty busy. And so doing suspension is, is, uh, one of our big categories and not only lifts do we do lowering as well. Yeah. I saw that you guys, uh, bag cars as yeah, well. Yeah. And that got really popular about a year ago. Or so, and usually when a car comes in to get back, we'll do a nice little, little video on yeah. it. But that's a cool, it's a cool thing to see a car move up and down by moving a switch. Or For sure. Your <laughs> so um, probably in our demographic, mm-hmm. that's what people are, are more used to right. is, uh, is, is putting air suspension. Right. Mm-hmm. So what brands do you offer and what services do you offer for air suspension? So it's, you know, the big ones. So Airlift Company, Airlift uh, Performance one. Um, AccuAir came back. I don't know if you know that or not. Really? Yeah. So they got bought out. We actually went in their booth and they had, and you should check out this video. Um, we did a video when we were at SEMA and they have a kit that literally bolts on to a Jeep and a Bronco, mm-hmm. a new Bronco. Their bags, everything. For like five or six grand. And it will literally take a Jeep from like stock height and lift it like three inches. Oh, wow. And it also lower it too. And yeah, so that's, you guys got to check that video out. It's really dope. Anyway, um, so those are the two main companies. There are some other companies out, smaller companies out there that we work with. Um, but for the demographic that we work with, which is imports when it comes to that, is uh, airlift suspension for sure. Got you. Now, let's just say maybe a newer model, uh, you know, a Accord, mm-hmm. uh, uh, Infinity, G mm-hmm. Series, mm-hmm. something like that. Yeah. Um, what do you say that somebody could get out the door with, uh, you know, an uh, air ride system? Air ride system, about four, it's like four or five grand. Oh, okay. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, probably closer to five after it's all installed and everything. And what's that, the install take on that? Like, two days. Two days? Yeah. Got yeah. You. So it's not too long. It's not too long. We can, I mean, we do, uh, when we do, when we, to install the struts and re- run the lines, it's like a day or so, day and a half. But then you have to worry about the, the air management system, right? So you got a tank, you have the manifold and, you know, fittings and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So we usually like make something nice for the customer. So they have something to show off too, yeah, right? So sure. they open the trunk, like, oh, there's this nice big tank and the compressors look great and everything. So. And lights too as well, right? Yeah. Got mm-hmm. you, got you. Man, that's awesome, dude. It's uh, it's, it's very cool that you're able to see th- that the times are changing mm-hmm. and adjust with them. Right. Because I still you know, hear radio ads on uh, from other brands and yeah. I, I see the kind of the things that they're doing. And, and even in our industry, mm-hmm. you know, there's a lot of uh, older business owners that yeah. they don't want to embrace the right. new style of things. Mm-hmm. And it just, you can see their, their company not doing as well as before, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's dope that you've been able to adopt like new technologies. Yeah. Well, you know, you have to, because I mean, we still run radio, but, um, not as much as we used to. Mm-hmm. And it's weird because I ask a lot of people cause I have to justify spending thousands and thousands of mm-hmm. dollars a month on radio. 
do you listen to the radio? And mm. people are like, no. <laughs> I listen to Spotify. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or I have Apple Music. So, so yeah, but you know, it's weird because people still listen to the radio, right? Because I mean, you still hear the ads. I still hear them too. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's weird because um, you don't really think about it sometimes, but the radio is on kind of in the background. Yeah. Right? Um, but we have, um, moving on from that, or just kind of piggybacking on what you're saying, We've done uh, Pandora ads. Oh, uh, very cool. We're running Spotify ads right now, too. I think I've seen a YouTube ad, <clears throat> if I'm not mistaken. We'll do YouTube ads, too. Yeah. But the majority of what we do is going to be on Instagram and uh, YouTube and TikTok. just the content that we create. What's up? TikTok. Oh, TikTok, yeah. <laughs> hey, TikTok is huge, Bro. dude. We have so much fun with TikTok, man. Let me tell you. Um, Sal heads that up. I have no input on that whatsoever so mm -hmm. if you want to talk to him about that he's your man go for it <laughs> so um tiktok so easy dude just cook up you know it's it's easy but it's hard at the same time because mm. uh it's hard coming up relating it say there's a funny trend okay now my job is how can i relate this how can i relate this to buying a stereo got you it's like Okay, yeah. it takes a while. Um, I can we can make fun of customers. We can <laughs> poke fun at our employees. Or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, some of them do well. Some some of them do like over hundred thousand views. Some oh, of them wow, do like three thousand cool. views. So how many uh, followers are you guys at on TikTok at the moment? Like five thousand, six thousand. Okay, very cool. So, uh, what's the uh, what's the the name on TikTok? Uh, Breaker Stereo Performance, right? Yeah. Yeah. Very cool, dude. Well. Yeah, I'm. I've. I've been kind of against uh, TikTok, dude. Yeah, yeah. Just the, the same mentality that I was saying for other business owners, I felt the same, like, nah, I don't want to get on TikTok. And then I was just like, you know what? Let it's, me try it out. And this the, that platform is so much better than Facebook or Instagram. You know, I, I love it, dude. It's my favorite app right now. And, and they barely added 10 minute videos as well. They're That's start. right. It just so happened, right? YouTube's real worried right now. YouTube is oh worried. Goodness. They had to add a little shorts feature on theirs because, mm -hmm. you know, TikTok's taking over. Now they're adding 10 minute videos to that. So yeah. We'll see how that pans out. Yeah. That, that's that's awesome for a creator, for sure, man. Yeah. With, with, with TikTok, it was, it was just kind of weird. It was like, okay, look, these, the people that are on it are younger mm -hmm. and not necessarily. In our uh, in our demo, well, you would think that, right? Mm -hmm. I went to um, a family party, mm -hmm. and that's when I first started posting up uh, TikTok, just just doing it uh, every day, just posting something, right? Mm -hmm. I had two of my parents' friends talk to me about the video I posted. Really? Yeah, and I was like, <laughs> "Wait, how did you see that video?" And they're like, "Oh, I saw it on TikTok." I'm like, "What? What? What really? are you doing?" Yeah, so it's, it's so weird, dude. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't think so. But like people that are maybe my parents' age, they're on TikTok, dude. And right. they're just looking at things because the first thought that comes to mind, mm -hmm. this is for children, this is for dancing. Yeah. But my wife's on TikTok all the time and they're showing, oh, I learned this recipe. I'm like, oh my God, this dinner's so good. She's <laughs> like, oh yeah, I learned it on TikTok. Weird. And then cool. uh, TikTok is like all the apps in one. It's mm -hmm. like Pinterest in yeah. one. Yeah. You know, it's and it just breaks it down in thirty seconds. You could tell how to make this meal, how how to make this whatever yeah. decoration yeah. that you're going for. And, yeah. and and it's such a good tool. And personally I feel like it's one that we're leaving on the table. So I, that's gonna be one of my focuses this year. Is, is to, to get on it. Yeah. To just to feed it a lot more because it's just like anything, dude, you gotta feed that machine. You do. You, know? you do. And um, I think it was, yeah. I mean, you're right. It was um, definitely geared towards um, younger people, yeah. um, and and you know, in my mind, uh, you know, it's good to hear you say that you think that it's going to be, you know, it's now currently, people, older people will use it, yeah, for sure, as well. Um, but I'll tell you a funny story. So we did a couple of TikToks, and I, I think I did the first heat TikToks, and my kids are like, "Bruh, <laughs> you can't be on there. You're too old," <laughs> and I'm like what really and I'm like yeah please stop <laughs> <laughs> so i try to stay out of them i think i in some of the recent ones i think i might have maybe one i don't even think so but it's weird tiktok is weird because there are ones where we'll do a full scale production where we'll pull out all the stops or we'll we'll storyboard it we'll we'll edit it we'll you know we'll think of everything yeah and those are the ones that do the worst yeah it's, it's the ones where he, i just go say i'll go do a tiktok while I'm doing this, he goes five minutes later, comes back and is like, all right, what do you think about this? 
And I'm like, okay, I guess that's cool. And you turn around, and then you've got 185,000 um, watches. Mm -hmm. And it's like, wow. And then the ones that we really produced, like there's one we did with a, a Jeep. that mm -hmm. we, It took like five employees to do this, and it took us a half hour. And it literally has like 1,200 watches. <laughs> and then there's even one where I brought in a Lamborghini. Um, and my daughter did the acting, and it literally, where's it at? I might have even erased it because it was so disappointing. <laughs> 2,000 views. <laughs> Bro, I feel the same, man. Um, like I said, this is episode 233. Mm -hmm. 233 interviews or conversations that we've had. And we've had them with, you know, in our industry, the the most popular people in, in our industry. Yeah. And uh, just doesn't get the views, yeah. you know. But then I have to look at it differently because yeah. what am I doing this for? Am I, am I doing this for a number mm -hmm. or am I doing this for the actual conversation? Yeah. You know, and um, even though if it'll get four or 500 likes or, or views or what have you, that's four or 500 people yeah. that heard this conversation. Right. That mm -hmm. hopefully one person takes something Way away from, from it, it yeah. and you know they can reflect on their life from mm -hmm. whatever we talked about right you know and even even you saying that 100 million dollar goal and it's possible you know mm -hmm. anybody could use that sort of logic yeah. to whatever they're doing right it's possible mm -hmm. because somebody's done it right mm, just to relate to like um what Josh said about the 100 million dollars uh, around my circle like I'm only I'm 23 years old my friends aren't talking about like, oh, we have to make $40,000 this week. Or we yeah, have yeah, to, we yeah. Have to, did we meet our um, daily budget of like $10,000? So be, me being in the office and in the shop, that was like my first time hearing those type of numbers thrown yeah. around. And Josh is like, Josh would be like, damn, we didn't make this amount of money, like thousands of dollars. And I'm like, what? You're like mad that you didn't make that? It's like, <laughs> but that's the reality. Like, we, I have to think outside, like the world doesn't revolve about around my bank account. There's like so much money for sure to be made and it's possible like Josh said. Hey, it's it's great that you even think on that train of thought as well because uh if you don't you're going to think that life is just so small, so local. You know, I I always say that like I'm not I'm not supposed to be here. This isn't the life that I'm supposed to be living. Success to me would have been working at Haas. You know? Yeah. Success to me would have been working on the ports or something like that. Mm -hmm. And that's that's the life that I was brought up in. That's the culture, all my friends. That's what everybody thought. And it wasn't until I, I just, I was pretty much given this, you know. I sold those products. Somebody somebody said, oh, well, I want to buy some too. And I, oh, okay. So it wasn't, it wasn't even my idea to like start a brand. It was just, you have to realize when those opportunities come. And I'm, I'm glad that you realize the opportunities that you have and you're, you're completely right, dude. It doesn't matter the age that you are. Yeah. It's, it's, you need to get to that point as soon as possible that it's like, yo, the life that I'm at right now, this is where I'm at from the amount of effort that I've put in. This is where I'm at. I want to get ahead I got to put in more effort but there's nobody that I have to get permission from if I want to make this happen I can make it dude and yeah you can be whatever you want yeah and I always think Josh because I have um I'll come with him with any question I have I'll be like what's a what's a what kind of CPA should I get what kind of do I have to can I write off this can mm. I write off my gas for this um yeah it's like so many things that I don't know that no one teaches yeah, for sure. And it's so cool having a business owner like Josh that I could, I sit next to and work with, and I could just ask. That's a beautiful thing, man. I love it, dude. Uh, so, kind of winding down. I know you got to get out of here. Um, yeah, we have to go through. Yeah, one one thing that that you did say earlier um, was about the you know the the, the trust, and mm -hmm. sometimes people don't like to go into the brick and mortar stores because right they're feeling like they're being sold something. Right. Yeah. You, you get this this dual this dual closure, uh, mm -hmm. you know, with the the light up box and what have you. It's one fifty, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. it'll, it'll look good. Mm -hmm. Maybe somebody will sell that because they get the best markup on on that mm -hmm. product right. rather than focusing on what the customer needs. Right. You know, so mm -hmm. so what sets Breaker Stereo apart from any other stereo shop in in the vicinity? Well, I, I try to um, I try to teach my my sales guys that 
um, you know, the best way to sell somebody is to really understand their needs and, uh, you know, do our best to try to fulfill those needs. Mm -hmm. Right. And like you said, don't have, you know, your, don't put your interest above theirs. Yes. Cause that's where you kind of get into trouble. And I brought, <clears throat> I brought other guys in, um, from the competition as salespeople mm -hmm. and what they were taught is like a complete opposite of what I teach my guys. Right. So they'll come in and as a business owner, you may think that that's, that's, this is a good thing, but they come in and they're like, you know, they're selling stuff that doesn't need to be sold. Mm. They're selling stuff that, um, you know, that it's just not necessary, let's say, or they got approved, let's say on something on a, a, an account and they max them out and knowing they can't afford the payment. You know what I mean? Like unethical stuff. Yeah. I mean, really a lot of that. And those yeah. guys obviously are not, they don't stay with us long. Yeah. A couple of months and they're out. <clears throat> and, and yeah, so I think that our culture is a lot different because like you said, we, we, we want to just kind of, we're passionate about, I mean, if you go to my store, they're all car guys. They are, they, they all have, you know, dope cars. They all have systems in their car. They're lowered. You know, I got, I have a mini Subi club at mm. my shop. There's like five or six guys. They all drive Subis. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Except nice. Me, except me, though. Huh? Except me. <laughs> Sal's working on a Subi. <laughs> <laughs> you're, either, you're either working on it or driving it. Exactly. Um, and we just want to, you know, we don't drive stock. That's our motto. We don't drive stock. Just like you, you don't drive stock. Like yeah. you have a car. You're not going to drive a stock, right? You're going to put something on it. You're going to put your own spin on it. And people come to our shop and they just kind of need guidance. Like, yeah. okay, you know, what do you want? Like, what do you want to do? Um, I want a better stereo system. Or I want wheels for my car. Okay, let me show you what's available, you know? And, and it's, we don't have a lot of pressure um, when you come into our store. So it's like, here's, we're presented to you. If you like it, great. Let's move forward. If you don't, let's figure out, you know, what you want. Mm -hmm. And if we don't have what you need, then go home and research a little more. Let us know when you're ready for it. I love it, dude. Um, I need to go in there. It's been a while. It has. You know, I, I need to get back into car audio. <laughs> I miss it. I have a I have an Altima too. And a, a few years ago, I was like, man, I miss it. I want to put a system in it. There you I go. Put, like a <laughs> kicker in it. And I was a typical Oxnard dude. Yeah. <laughs> All blacked out tin. You guys still offer tin? Yeah. As well? yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Do. So what are some of the things to expect from Breakers in 2022? Um, okay. So this year, we're really focusing on our website. And we're doing an uh, interaction uh, interactive type website okay as well um so there's a couple different aspects to the website that i that I, um that we are doing that makes us a little bit different than some of the other car stereo companies around and we're light years ahead of the competition in our local area okay okay so for instance let's say what year's your ultima uh 2007 okay so if you want a, a radio you can go onto our website you um you, it'll ask you what your make model is 2007 Nissan Altima. I want to look at radios. Boom. You find a radio. It'll fit. Boom. And it goes, you get a pop-up and it goes, you need this kit, this harness, this antenna. Down gotcha. There. So it does it all on the, um, on the website for you. And if you want it, you click it. And if you don't, you, you know, you just go to cart directly. That's one thing. Um, <clears throat> the next thing we're working on is the suspension. So the suspension, suspension, same thing. You put your make model in, it'll pop up all the kits that you want. You want a seven inch kit, you want a level kit, whatever you want comes up. Oh, which shocks do you want? Do you want these shocks? Do you want the basic shocks? Do you want Fox shocks? Do you want Bilstein? So it all builds it for you, right? So there's not a lot of guesswork as far as, oh, will this fit my car? Will this not fit, fit my car, right? So we're, Mario writes the code, so it all kind of populates by themselves. Um, we also have something that's already written, which I think is really cool. We haven't implemented it yet. We haven't, because it's, it's pretty complex. But it works like this. Okay, so your car, 2000, what'd you say? Seven? Seven, yeah. Seven Ultima. I want a system. So it's like, we build a system for you online. So you put the year make model, and that's one of the cars, because there's like 10 very popular cars that we work on, and an Altima, it so happens to be one of them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's the hood car. That is, man. <laughs> <laughs> that is. The, hey, they're, they're roomy. They, you know, they're good on gas. They're fast, bro. <laughs> do, do the dip. You're good. Exactly. <laughs> right? <laughs> do your dirt and yep. you know there's like a million of them out there so you you never be identified <laughs> <laughs> anyway you go so you put your make model in uh, we built five different systems for you mm -hmm. full systems okay 
you want an Alpine system, a Memphis system, um, a kicker system, boom, boom, boom. We package it together, give you all the wiring, give you all the parts, shows up to your doorstep. You put it in yourself or, you know, you go to your local car stereo shop and they install for you. So those are, those are the things that we're, um, that we're working on. Also, we do, we do some really interesting videos with, um, with speakers, right? Cause a speak, a stereo is one thing because a stereo it does, it does this. It has this feature. You know what to expect, mm -hmm. right? But when you buy a speaker, it's a wholly, totally different thing, right? Because you don't know what the speaker's going to sound like. Yeah. And if you're buying it online, that's one thing that we, um, that we said, hey, where's a problem that we can solve, right? Because if I'm spending $1,000 on this, a set of speakers by just reading on a website, mm -hmm. how likely is that going to happen? Probably not very likely. And then is your expectation... Of that, if you do pull the trigger, is the expectation going to be, you know, is going to are you is it going to meet your expectation? So we said, okay, what can we do? All right, so we got to figure this thing out because I want to sell speakers online, okay? Um, because I'll be honest with you, it's a high, it's higher profit. When you sell a car stereo, we don't even make any money. Mm. By the time I pay sale, <laughs> by the time um, we uh, pay for the shipping. Pay the guys to wrap it up and send it out. We don't lose. We don't make any money. Mm -hmm. And then there's times where we lose money on that stuff mm -hmm. too. But when we sell speakers, it's a whole other story because the margins there. Okay. Right. So I'll just give you an example. All right. So if I sell if I sell you a radio for a hundred dollars, it costs me seventy. By the time I ship it, pay people to do what they need to do, uh, it's another thirty bucks at least. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. If I sell you a set of speakers for a hundred dollars, I buy them for fifty, mm. right? So okay. I pay that thirty dollars, and then I get to make some money at the end of it. So I'm like, all right, we need to figure out how to demonstrate this on YouTube. It's never been done before, okay? Guy, you can go and Google, or you can go and search on YouTube for speakers, and you'll have people that do reviews, but they'll just kind of talk about it. Oh, I like this because of this and this and that. Yeah, but you don't actually listen to it. So we. We said, all right, what we're going to do is we're going to actually demonstrate these things. We got an expensive mic, put it in our showroom, and we would A-B these things against each other. Mm. And if you put a set of headphones on, you can hear the difference between the two. So like normally you go into breakers and you go, I want a, a set of speakers. Okay, listen to this. You, you go into our room, our demo room. Listen to this speaker. This one's 100 bucks. Listen to this one. This one's 200 bucks. Listen to this one. This one's 300 bucks, right? And you go, okay, play that one again. Okay, play that one again. Okay, play that one more time. Mm. And you're like, oh, I like those ones. Okay, I like the $200 ones. Even better than the $300 ones, right? Okay. So on, on a video that we created, and these ones take an immense amount of time to do, <clears throat> is we set the microphone, we play some music <clears throat> on each of these, and different types of music on each of these, and then you're able, we time stamp them, and you can actually go and A, B, M. This one. Mm. This one. Wow, that's awesome. This one. This one. And, and you know, at first, I were like, is this even going to work? Yeah. Because will it translate through? Will it, you know, will people actually grab he some headphones and actually take a listen, yeah. you know, to it? And they do. Yeah. <laughs> and they actually do. And we have some of the our, our videos that have the most um, views are the speaker videos. Very cool, man. Yeah. So that's you know we want to we want to be able to the thing is with car audio it's always been a thing where you have to walk into the store kind of see what they have deal with the salesperson. Um, listen to the stuff and kind of figure out if this is the system that you want to do. And even then it's like a question mark, right? Cause you don't know if it's the system going to be put together. Right. And I think that's one of the biggest hurdles that we have in the car audio industry is like, okay, how do we, as an online company, how do we, how do we uh, make sure that we're giving the customers what they want? Right. Cause yeah, you can sell something, but if they're not happy, then what's the freaking point, right? If it's not what they want, if it doesn't meet their expectation, then what's the point? So how can we, you know, demonstrate what these products can do so that they can make a, a good informed decision. Yeah. Because if you buy, you know, a, a pair of wheels and tires online, you know what they're going to look like. Yeah. <laughs> right. You know what it is. And even in your industry too, you know, you, um, you know, the, the dress up stuff, your bolts, you know what they look like, right? Because you have great pictures online, but with this a speaker, it's an intangible. Yeah, for sure. It's not an intangible thing. It's an intangible uh, outcome because you, okay, the speaker looks great, but how does it sound? Yeah. <laughs> Am I going to like it? And what I listen to is different than, like what I hear is different than what you hear. So I may think, and there's been, ever since day one, I go into a, 
I go into a, uh, a demonstration in our demo room, non-biased. Because the moment I start to be biased, it's like they do the opposite. Because my what I hear is different mm. than what they hear. Like, I'm like, listen to these. These sound good. Listen to these. These sound pretty good, huh? These sound better. Listen to these. These are the best. And they're like, I like the second ones. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And you're like, what are you listening to? Because <laughs> they, they have a different taste. They do. They have a different taste. And I think they, they listen to things differently. And they're looking yeah. for different things. And we did an interview um, with the uh, CEO and the um, founder of uh, the company Blam that I mentioned earlier. Okay. And um, he mentioned, he did something that, he mentioned something that I had never even thought about before. And it's one of the reasons why the European companies have dominated the sector of um, like mids and highs and components, right? Like I was saying earlier, a lot of those companies come out of Europe. Yeah. Well, the culture listens to music differently, and I had no idea mm. that, that 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 was even happening. I'm in the business thirty years, no idea. The first time I've ever heard it, he explained it. I'll explain it as best I can. So he says he's a it's a he's a French guy, and um, he. He says that it's called the French sound is what they're after. And that's more into vocals. So he, they're really into vocals and the warmness of the sound and the detail that the, the, that, uh, that the voice makes mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, when singing. I had no idea that that was, that was even a thing. And then he goes, we have a, a, and our Japanese market is different. They like things really bright, really tinny. You know? And so we have products for Japanese. And the Americans... Um, they like they like a lot of bass and they like loudness, mm-hmm. right? So, have you ever adjusted an EQ curve? Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. okay. So the EQ, <clears throat> we'll try to explain this so you guys can visualize it. So on one side is the bass, mm-hmm. and one side is the treble, and in the middle is the mids, mm-hmm. right? So I'm going to ask you. So when you adjust your EQ curve, what does it look like normally? It's uh treble high mm-hmm. and then it all tapers down yep. and then everything else is controlled by the sub right the, okay the base is the controlled base by, the is by the sub yeah. right so he says americans like <clears throat> a lot of bass and a lot of treble and when they adjust their eq it looks like that mm. right and i was like yeah i never knew that i never like that's how i when i adjust an eq i automatically do like the smiley face mm, okay gotcha. right and then if they've got a lot of bass you're right then i'll turn that down a little bit because we don't want to overkill the bass yeah for sure right but, but that's how they listen to music. And I had no idea that that was the way that people from different countries listen to music. So with that being said, you know, people listen to music differently. And what I think sounds good, you may not sound good. So we said, how can we demonstrate this in a video? And we've done a pretty good job doing that. Very cool, dude. That's mm-hmm. awesome, man. Um, I know you guys got to get out of here, dude. It was awesome having you in here. Yeah, thanks for having just, us. Uh, just... Being able to pick your brain about the business, man. I, I wish you guys the best, and I, I hope that you hit that goal. Yeah, man. You know, and uh, maybe we could get some Downstar products inside there. Yeah, for sure. And that's, the, those that's hoods kinda... are pop, dude. When you guys are putting <laughs> that fuse in, we're like, hey, yeah. we can put some of these bolts on right here. No, for sure, man. Yeah, I'd love to have you guys' products um, on our website. For Thank sure. You, it definitely brother. goes in with the, our demographic. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. So before we get out of here, um, let me get both of your guys' uh, social medias once again. Um, and then the YouTube channel. Yeah, so the YouTube channel is Breakers Stereo and Performance. Okay. Uh, our TikTok is Breakers.Stereo. Okay. And our Instagram is also Breakers Stereo and Performance. Okay. Mm-hmm. Cool, cool. And, and you, Sal, once again? It's my personal is Sal X A and G. Okay. My business is A and G Video Works. I love it, man. All right, cool, guys. And um, just but, but last thing that came to my mind. I have the M8, like I was telling you. Mm-hmm. I would like the sound to be louder. Is, do they sell some like sort of piggyback interface that you could put in that that you could get more uh, volume out of it? On which vehicle? Uh, the the BMW, the M8. Oh yeah, okay. So you have a um, a Harman Kardon system, in it, probably <laughs> right? Yes. Yeah, it's an M8, so it has to have that. Okay, so what's <clears throat> excuse me? What's complicated about your vehicle? <laughs> is you've got lots of speakers in there, right? Mm-hmm. So you've got a center speaker, you got uh, speakers on the, uh, the pillar, you have speakers on the door, you have speakers underneath the seat, mm-hmm. um, and then speakers in the back also with the components. Okay, and uh, the other thing is you have a Harman Kardon system in there, which is a, um, a very complex system. Mm. 
but, 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 <laughs> there's a company um, uh, out of Europe, again, uh, called Helix. Mm -hmm. And they make pretty much plug and play solutions mm. for vehicles like yours. We're actually going to be working on, I want to say it's also an M8. My daughter called me, one of my good friends, um, Ben Goldman, bought a brand new uh, M-Series. Mm -hmm. And he's like, he just wants more volume. So we're ordering him in uh, at the Helix. I want to say it's a Helix 12. And there's a Harman Kardon adapter for that. So we can put that, basically put that Helix amplifier, which is going to be like over two times the amount of power that you have mm. at a Harman Kardon. And it's going to be plug and play. Right, so what's important for BMW guys is that you can't cut anything up, yeah. right? Because it'll just void the warranty. I mean, it literally says it. I think on the windshield there's a sticker that says, "If you tamper with this, your warranty, warranty is void." And BMW is the worst yeah. when it comes to uh, <laughs> to warranty stuff. I mean, literally, it, they're the worst because as soon as they they see something, and and for me it was hard for me to understand because I was like, I've had gotten calls, and I we had, we, we've got friends at you know Steve Thomas over here down the street, and we we have a few BMWs. And my, brother, my daughter brought her car in, and uh, my guy Travis is like, yo, I can't scan this thing. Um, you're going to have to take this out. And I was like, it has nothing to do with what's going on, because I put an amplifier in it. Mm. And he goes, I know, but I can't scan it. Yeah, once they plug it in, it sends it to Germany. Right. And they flag it. Yeah. So he goes, you have to put that one, put your original one back in. And I was like, I, I, didn't, I didn't know that. I know you guys were sticklers about it, but I had no idea that you actually hook it up to the you know, the computer and it, it does all this diagnosis yeah. and it senses something that's not original. But what's great about this company is they know that. So it literally unplugs and you can plug your original back in. Mm -hmm. So when you need it serviced, right, you just go back, pop the, it's in the trunk, mm -hmm. pop a panel, unplug the uh, aftermarket app, plug in your original amplifier and then go get it serviced. Wow. So what does something like that run? That, when it's all done, said, tuned and everything, it's like 2500 bucks. Okay. Mm -hmm. Got you. So it's not, but it's not, I mean, okay. If a guy has a, a, a you know, you're not spending $2,500 on your Altima. You're yeah. spending $2,500 on your M8. Yeah. <laughs> yeah if I not, spend not that big Altima, of a deal. I'll just buy another Altima. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So it is like at face value, you go, oh, it's kind of a lot. But, and you know, relative to the vehicle you yeah, have. Yeah, for it's sure. Not for that, sure. It's not that much. Dude. <laughs> Awesome, bro. Maybe I'm going to have to swing by yes, one day to sure. check out mm -hmm. what you guys got. Mm -hmm. But, um, dude, thank you guys for coming. Absolutely. I appreciate it. Thanks for having us. Yeah, of course. So, guys, thank you for listening. Um, we'll have everything listed below. Go check out Breakers. I want to post up that video. Yeah. I want to I want to see what you're working with, Sal. And, <laughs> uh, yeah, man, thank you guys for listening. Once again, this is Downtime with Downstar, episode 233. And we out. Peace. Peace.